Hello everyone, my name is Enel from Flip Your Learning and today we are going to talk about tight junctions. They are one of the kinds of protein complexes that keep cells together. We have a bunch of them, adherence junctions, desmosomes, cap junctions and tight junctions. Each of them is really good at doing something in particular. In the case of tight junctions, they connect the microfilaments of one cell to those of the neighboring cells. But adherence junctions can also do that, and they can do it sort of better than tight junctions. What makes tight junctions really special is that they bring the membranes of the cells that they are connecting very close together. Adherence junctions might be stronger, but they also need a bigger area of interaction between the proteins. Tight junction proteins bring the membranes very close together, and they block the movement of molecules between the cells or through the membrane of the cells, and that's really important. That allows them to maintain a symmetry in a tissue between sides of a cell layer or between sides of the plasma membrane of the cell. They don't create the asymmetry, but when the asymmetry has been created, they ensure that it lasts. For example, we have these orange proteins in the apical side of the cell, the top cell, and have these green proteins in the basolateral side of the cell, the rest of the cell, everything that is not apical. We find the tight junctions closest to the apical side. In fact, they are the closest to the apical side kind of junctions. All of the other ones are below the tight junctions in cells with apicobasal polarity, like the cells in our intestines, where, for example, the apical side would be looking to the lumen, the interior of the intestine, taking nutrients up, and the basal side would be looking to the capillaries, for example, to pass them the nutrients that they had captured. We want to be selective with the nutrients that we take. We don't want all of the nutrients to go between the cells and into the capillaries, or not only the nutrients, but also the things we don't need. We have specific cells with receptors and transporters to capture specific nutrients, bring them into the cell, and out of the cell through the basal side. That's called transcytosis. Tight junctions enable transcytosis because they block the movement of those orange proteins. If there weren't any tight junctions, those proteins would mix up over time. The same would happen with the membrane proteins, for example, the transporters. They could mix up and end up in sites where we don't really need them, where they could take the nutrients that we have just moved to the other side and bring them back inside the cell. We don't want that happening. We only want them in the apical side. In order to do that effectively, we don't only need one tight junction complex, we need a lot of them forming bands that go around the cell and are interconnected. That way, no molecules can go through. So, how do you make one of these tight junctions? What proteins make it up? First, we need some membrane proteins. The main one is clothing. Without it, we can have tight junctions. We also have occludings and, on the invertebrates, jump proteins. Clothings and occludings belong to the same type of proteins. They make four transmembrane, they have four transmembrane domains. Jump proteins belong to the immunoglobulin family and they only have one transmembrane domain. All of these proteins will interact with active microfilaments, but they want to eat directly, as it happens with all of these kind of cell addition complexes. They need adapters. In the case of tight junctions, these adapters are sonolaglutens 1, sonolaglutens 2, and sonolaglutens 3, abbreviated as CO. Sonolaglutens, by the way, is the name of tight junctions in Latin. These CO proteins have a lot of binding sites. They can bind to any of the transmembrane proteins, they can bind to one another, and they can also bind to actin microfilaments. I hope I have been able to capture that idea with the drawing. They can also recruit other adapter proteins and regulator proteins, but we are not going to go into much detail about them because there are a lot of them, they aren't very well known or well understood, and it's probably beyond the level that you require for whatever class you are studying this in. Just to mention one, I have chosen singling which connects the sonal occludens proteins with actin microfilaments and also with a bunch of other adapters, regulators and even with microtubules. 
but again i'm not going to go into that much detail we also have other proteins that can participate other transmembrane proteins like angulins tricellulin again they are less understood and i'm not going to explain them in this video this is the classic idea that you will find in most books and i think that's enough for most university courses and with that we have a tight junction there's one last detail I wanted to mention. It's not directly related to tight junctions or their function of maintaining asymmetry, but it's interesting. You're probably going to come across it in future classes, in other lectures, maybe in developmental biology or something like that. It's the fact that jump proteins can also recruit the PAR3, PAR6, APKC protein complex. This complex is involved in cell polarity. It's normally recruited to the apical side of cells, or to other sides in other cells, maybe the distal, or the anterior, or the posterior side, it depends. Half or less of the cell has it, the rest of the cell doesn't have it. And one way to control where it is, is by making it bind to jump proteins. Of course, in invertebrates who don't have jump proteins, there are other mechanisms to bring the PAR3, PAR6, APKC complex to the apical side, but we will see them in future videos. I just thought it was nice to connect it now that we were talking about jump proteins. I think that's enough for this video. If you want to remember it, I would recommend using Anki and the image occlusion add-on. I've designed the slides in a way that it would be pretty easy to cover some of the important keywords. Maybe you can cover the, all of the set O proteins all at the same time, or an entire definition or function, and have it test you and decide how well you know it. Also, if you want to download the slides for whatever uses you might need, you can do that at the channel website flipyourlearning.com. And if you want to watch another video, I would recommend the adherence junction one because it also connects cells through their microfilaments and it's the kind of junction that you find just below tight junctions in polarized cells. See you soon. Hasta pronto.